everyone. I'm Melissa McAllister, and you're listening to The Melissa Made Show. Now, for decades, I've dedicated myself to helping women break the cycle of dieting, navigate through all the fads, and change their lives through my nutrition coaching. Now, each week, I'm going to talk about everything from deep nutrition, mindset, self-care, the ideal workout routine, tips on how and why to implement intermittent fasting in your life, my favorite recipes that are not only crowd pleasers, but they're actually healthy for you, and so much more. Now with small and consistent changes, you can defy aging while living a happier, healthier, and more heart-filled life. I'm so excited to show you it's possible with the right strategies that are so simple to adopt. everybody and welcome to the Melissa Made Show. So I have a very special guest today. I was just telling her how much I enjoyed binging her social media. So uh, as soon as you are done listening to this, you're going to have to pull over if you're on the road or if you're making dinner, you're going to have to stop. And I want you to follow her on social media. Uh, at the very least, she's got amazing recipes. I was uh, hadn't eaten breakfast yet and I was going through her social media and I'm like, oh, these look really good. <laughs> So she is going to talk to us a day about some topics that you're familiar with that I've shared with you in the past, but also some topics that I told her, I'm like, this is new for me and something that I really not dove into. So I'm going to be the student today, just as you are. But as I always do, I want to give her a proper introduction. Her name is Dr. Wendy Trubo. How cool is that, right? And she is passionate about helping women optimize their health and lives as a functional medicine gynecologist. Through her struggles with mold and metal toxicity, celiac disease, and other health issues, Dr. Trubo has developed a deep sense of compassion and expertise uh, for what her patients are facing. She's the co-author of Dirty Girl, <laughs> Ditch the Toxins, Look Great, and Feel Freaking Amazing. She had me right there. And she's been regularly featured in Mind Body Green, which I personally love, by the way, and Huffington Post. And she's been praised by names like Dr. Hyman and Mel Robbins. Dr. Trubo is an accomplished speaker and previously had her own television show. And you'll, as soon as you hear her speak, you'll be like, okay, I get it. <laughs> she and her partner will be releasing a brand new book in 2024. So Dr. Trubo, it is such a true bow, such an honor to have you. I, here I went on and on about how much I loved your name and then I decided to change it on you. <laughs> uh, so grateful to have you here today and would love for you, if you don't mind, just maybe just telling your story a little bit, like what got you into uh, the practice that you're doing today. And it seems as though you have a few specialties and besides going through your own health journey, uh, what has gotten you to kind of be the voice for those of us that may be going through that or have loved ones that are and how to overcome these. And first off, thanks so much for having me here. This is great, A. And B, um, obviously you've got the long bio. I'm sorry about that. We'll get a short one. Oh, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> so I really come to this. My mess is my message, 100%. Mm. And when you look at who I was born as, I was essentially a setup to be really sick. I'll say it that way. So I was born in 1970. The EPA and I are the same age. And <laughs> I think I've accomplished more than the EPA, actually. I agree. We, uh, we were born in 1970, and my parents have terrible genes. And we didn't know this in 1970s, right? So I actually sat my parents down last December. We were at an event together, a family event, and they're divorced, but they're super friendly. They're chatting. And I sat them down. I was like, I just have to be honest with you. I love you to pieces. I'm glad that you reproduced because I wouldn't be here, but you really shouldn't have. <laughs> they didn't know that I didn't know or that I have two copies of the MTHFR mutation, which impairs <laughs> detox and how you process your B vitamins and raises your risk for cardiovascular disease, cancer, heart attack, emotional dysfunction, you name it. I have two copies for that. I have two copies of the vitamin D deficiency gene and vitamin D regulates your gut function, your immune system, your bones, your brain, your like everything. And then I have two copies for celiac, which is an autoimmune reaction to gluten. Girl. <laughs> man, hot mess, man. So I didn't know any of that, right? Like I didn't. And so I go through my 
early years with multiple episodes of ear infections and strep throat. I had pneumonia mm -hmm. when I was six months old. So by the time I'm 10, by the time we hit the 80s, and I promise I'm not going to go line by line, but by the time we hit the 80s, I don't even have a count of how many antibiotic courses yeah. I've had. And so I have gut dysfunction from antibiotics. We never took probiotics. We didn't know about them. It was the 70s, right? Like it was another generation. So fast forward, I'm now in my teens, and I don't know what it's called, but I know that I, I know that my gut is very messy, meaning that I knew that I couldn't eat oranges or peppers or garlic because I would always get this like sharp stabbing stomach pain. And some days I would have diarrhea, fast forward to my 20s, I would go through diarrhea, constipation, bloating gas on the same day. And I didn't know that was called irritable bowel. I really didn't, like I really never complained. And obviously I learned that it was at some point, but I, I sort of went through my years, and by the, by my 20s, I was in med school, and I had no idea that I had irritable bowel. We learned about it, and I didn't, you know, you can't treat yourself. So fast forward to my 30s. I'm married. I have one child. I have a, I'm pregnant with my second kid, and I'm really messy. So I can't mm -hmm. get out of bed. I get out of bed because I'm the primary breadwinner at that time. But I was exhausted. I had hair loss. I had brain fog. I had asthma. I had thyroid dysfunction. I had that irritable bowel. I had bad periods. I had bad OB outcomes. So my firstborn was a severely growth restricted creamy. She weighed three pounds, mm. three ounces, like she was tiny. And my joints hurt and I was super slim, like thin. I was skinny, I would say. And, and now I'm slim, but I was wasting essentially. And in my mid thirties, my husband said to me, why don't you, why don't you go see my mentor? He was a functional medicine doc, one of the old timers. Right before our insurance changes, one person in my mentor. I'm like, okay. So I go see him. He does what I consider to be a ridiculously big workup. <laughs> I was, you know, I was new to it. And he diagnoses me with a whole slew of food sensitivities, full on head to toe nutritional deficiencies and celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disease that puts you at risk for death from all causes, but really causes often a lot of GI disturbance and nutritional deficiencies, bone loss. It causes a whole bunch of problems. So I got diagnosed at 35 with celiac. I didn't have bone loss, which was amazing. Because I had been sick at this point for 20 years. <clears throat> and that was my entry into functional medicine. And I was currently at that time an OBGYN. So I did surgery, I delivered babies, I took care of women in the office, and it opened my eyes. Like it was life changing. And about four years later, I gave notice at my traditional job and I went into our practice that my husband had started in functional medicine. Mm -hmm. So for the next 13 years, I focus on my health because I'm a provider of functional medicine. I need to walk the talk, right? Like I got to look the way I'm telling my patients to eat and move and sleep and blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm walking the talk. And then I hit 48. <laughs> and I came back from this amazing trip to France, and after I came back, I gained almost 10 pounds, and my hair started falling out in, like, clumps and droves. To the, my hairdresser was like, what's going on with me? I'm like, I don't know. And I had a rash on my face. I had brain fog. I was exhausted. And, you know, I'm in functional medicine, so I can order these tests on myself. So I order my thyroid. It looks great. My previous thyroid so dysfunction had resolved. Then I order my hormones because I'm 48, so let's blame the hormones. My hormones look normal. But now I'm like, all right, all disease starts in the gut. Let's do a stool test. So I do my stool test, and it's pretty great, which is shocking because I have celiac, and my stool test is always a mess. Yeah. So it looks good. I'm like, okay, my functional medicine work really did work, but I don't know what's going on still. And then I read this article that when Notre Dame burned at least 500 tons of, art of lead into the environment, and the closer you were to Notre Dame, the more you got, the farther away, the less you got. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I spent a week in France right in that area. And I got sick. And it was the week after Notre Dame burnt. And I got sick when I came back. So I, I hear this report and I'm like, oh, God, I got a lead exposure. We all got a lead exposure. We went with our family, our four kids, our moms. But I'm the one who's sick. And so I did a lead test, and here, here's where the plot thickens, Melissa, because doctors are terrible patients, okay? So I had previously done a lead test, and it was mildly positive. 
mild, like just to sniff over positive. And I was like, I, I ignored it. I was like, how bad could it be, right? And I didn't act on it. So I do this repeat lead test and it's 25% higher. So now I'm like clearly in the positive, right? And it got my attention. So then I tested, I had tested for mycotoxins before going to France. I get my report back when I come back and I have five strains of mycotoxins. Mycotoxins wow. are the toxins that mold puts out when it's in your body. That's creepy. I don't want yeah. mold in my body. So I have five strains and then I decide to do the environmental toxins, which is like gasoline fumes, plastic, styrene, styrofoam, flame retardants. And I have a whole list of those. And that's why we wrote the book. Cause I look at my husband and I go, I am such a dirty girl and we need to write this book to get the word out because I'm the poster child for healthy living. Yeah. If I have all of this, what does everyone else have who might not have knowledge of, oh yeah, when you paint your house, don't use VOC paint. And when you stain, don't use VOCs and don't use VOC in the glue and filter your air. Like I knew all that stuff yeah. and I, I was still very messy with it. So that is a very long answer to how we got here, but my mess became my message because we live on this earth. And if you live on this earth, you're exposed to countless toxins every day and they make us fat, sick, hairless, and feel dead. We gotta fix it. Oh, that's that's what that last little sentence that you just said is so important. <laughs> and there's so many uh people that I speak with that which is why I'm glad that you're really, really glad that you're here that we we check all the things and everything seems to come back okay and you're like well is, is this person being honest with me you know are they really eating as well as they are you know are they managing their stress are they sleeping well are they hydrating because everything is checking out just like with you everything's checking out okay so i my next rule of thought is just to think my goodness it's you know it's maybe she doesn't really want to tell me how she's truly living but this is it you know, this could very well be the area. Like I told you in the beginning, I'm not very proficient in it. So i got to read your book <laughs> that these toxins play such a huge role. Um, and that's, I have, gosh, I have so many questions, but I want to start by, I want to start by talking with you about things that, that I am familiar with. Uh, and then I want to kind of work our way into things that, that I'm not as well. Uh, but starting with uh, therapeutic nutrition, I know that's really big for you um, and, and helping to kind of correct, you know, the body chemicals and nutritional imbalances that we have. Can you kind of share with the audience uh, your thoughts and your tips on nutrition on a therapeutic level, which I just think is so important today. In fact, uh, yes, I've been, I don't know if you, I'm sure you have ever heard of a microbiome mash. I had made one just a couple of days ago and have my frozen mashed up vegetables in the freezer. And it was just, my husband had surgery. So I've been very busy, but I pulled it out yesterday and stuck it in some bone broth because I knew that this little tiny chunk of mash that had, you know, a good 12 vegetables in it that I normally won't eat <laughs> uh, running through my system and helping feed my gut. Uh, I just know that's one of the very important things that you can do is the diversity in the diet and making sure that you're feeding the gut. But I would love your take on therapeutic nutrition and how you help your patients in that field. I think we need to talk, Melissa, first about what it means to be a female human. Okay. Because, because the listeners are probably like me, like I got to do it right. They're good doobies. They want to improve. And there's not a lot of room for imperfection. And then we get right. down on ourselves. So the first thing I'll say is that Sure, food's critical. It's a foundational thing to your health. And there, it's meant to have ebb and flow. It's not meant to be perfect. Perfect only exists on the Hollywood screen, fully edited, right? That's not yeah. real life. Filters. <laughs> it's important to remember, like, you're gonna, you're gonna have excursions. You're gonna go to a wedding, a birthday party, out of town, out to eat. And, and so this is, this is meant to be do your best. Mm -hmm. 80 to 90% of the time and 10 to 20% of the time, you'll have some excursions and don't have that be a stress point. This is not about all or nothing in perfection because the females listening, like you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like I got to do it right, right? No, you, you, you need to be in the game, but you don't have to be perfect. And don't let your excursions be the excuse for not being in the game. Yes. Right? Like you're going to have excursions, get right back on your path. So. So food is foundational. You, it is medicine. You can't get away from it. And I always think of life as a spectrum. And what I mean by that is 
some people cook all their own food and they eat nothing packaged and they don't eat sugar and they drink filtered water and they're like on the, oh my God, how do you do that spectrum? Yeah. And then there's the people who eat three meals a day out of their house, don't cook a thing, eat lots of, drink lots of plastic water, you know, water from plastic bottles, don't filter anything. You know, there, it's a huge spectrum. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's all these places in the middle. And the goal is not necessarily to be perfect. The goal is to start wherever you are and level up. Yeah. Right? Okay. So wherever you are, there's always room for improvement. Level up. So that doesn't mean, you know, I was leading an intro to a class last week. And someone said, do I have to change the way I eat? <gasps> I'm like, that's a super disempowering question. Like, so, ah. so you don't have to do anything. However, if you don't make a change, you'll get more of the same and it'll probably get worse. So yeah. because food's so foundational, what I believe, and that's borne out by the research, is eat food that looks like itself. Minimally processed, not cooked to death. Eat the broadest range of food that you can eat. Like make it a game. See how many unique items you can get in you. In you. Don't get in a food rut and try new things. Yeah. And within that, minimize processing, minimize sugar, minimize processed carbs. And and I, I would be remiss if I didn't say minimize or eliminate alcohol because it's a toxin. And it is so toxic that nothing else can happen when you're dealing with that toxin. So so minimize or eliminate. But really look at it like it's it's not about being perfect. It's about an ebb and a flow and what works for you. And there is something to eating with the seasons you know if you're in a really cold climate you're not going to do a juice fast right in a in a cold time you see the people like if you're going to do a fast in november i live in boston massachusetts don't do a juice fast in november do a bone broth fast in november and then as the earth wakes up and you want to do a cleanse do a three-day cleanse in late april early may like do it with the earth so try to eat locally try to eat organic if possible do your best with what you have. I love the term excursions. I always, I always use the term off plan. Uh, you know, tr trying to be very sensitive because we don't want to, we don't want to label things. But I love the term excursion. Uh, that stuck with me. And then I also love that you mentioned to eat foods as close to how they naturally look as possible. And I think that's a very simple uh, and clear way to say that. I people ask me all the time to like write a cookbook. <laughs> I'm like. I can't. I said I'd grab a piece of meat and some vegetables for dinner. There's no, there's no preparation. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and the recipes that you have on your uh, social media, like I was saying as well, are look very simple and very beautiful and very colorful, and and all of that. So obviously practicing uh, what you're preached. So I, I appreciate uh, you being real about the eighty to ninety percent. I tell my clients all the time that if I want you to be 90% good, you know, that you're, you're really trying hard to eat the foods that fuel your body. Uh, and you eat three meals a day, you're 90% good. If two of those meals are off plan or an excursion, I love that. So you can still in a week have two meals that are off plan, which to me sounds great. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. That's a Friday and a Saturday, a Friday and a Sunday that you can have a, a meal that, you know, is a little more fun, shall I say, than what you have on your get, get healthy or stay healthy meal plan and still be 90% good. So perfection is, is never something that you should. But let's talk about being a, a I call these, you and I are woke us. We're women of a certain age. <laughs> so we just came back from a vacation in Spain. And when we were in Spain, I chose to eat differently than I normally eat. Cause it's very interesting. Europeans don't eat a boatload of vegetables and meat. Yeah. They eat a lot of carbs. And mm -hmm. so I was like, well, I'm in Spain. I'm going to eat how Spain's eat. Okay. And I gained seven pounds on my vacation. I was like, I've never done this in my life. Being a woke has its benefits because I'm much more present and much less interested in going with the flow. Like I want to go with what works with me. And if it's not the flow too bad, but we gain weight much quicker. And we take Amen. it off much slower. Amen. So I came back over a month ago. I've lost, I lost initially five pounds quite quickly because it was like inflammatory weight, but I'm still there. Like I'm, I haven't lost all the weight Yeah. because it's just a lot harder. Now I'm also building muscle. So who knows? Did I gain a quarter of an inch of muscle? Who knows? But 
Yeah. But it's much easier when we have these excursions to gain weight in ways that we're not like psyched about and it's hard to take it off comparatively. So so on one hand I'm like don't you don't have to be perfect and on the other hand I'm like your excursion at 53 is going to be a lot different than my excursion was at 20. At 20 I ate the whole bag of chips and I ate the whole container of the Tostitos cheese dip. My god, like how things have changed. And now I have a much smaller portion on my excursion, right? Like it's a totally different world. So keep in mind, as we change, our, our resilience changes. It, you're, you're so validating to me because here I was telling you about the, the, the large amount of calls that I did this last weekend. And I had to share with a lot of the women that are a little bit older who had gone off track and were having a hard time getting back on, you know, me empathizing and telling them I last year. So we're coming up almost a year that I just a little bit more through caution to the wind during the holidays. I ate more, I didn't eat as well, and I drank a lot more. And at first, because of my near 30 years of, you know, being in the fitness industry, you know, studying and, and preaching good nutrition, being very, very consistent, it took a while for it to show up. I was like, oh, I guess I don't have to be so good because I still looked great. I still felt great, but I was drinking more and eating more and it hit me. <laughs> and when I finally decided to reel it in, and it was a couple of months, it was so difficult to get off. I just, I was at my wits end. I'm like, I don't understand why I can't get this off, why I can't get my energy back. So you're right at almost 50 and uh, you look younger than me, darn you, even though you're older than me, it was, it was very difficult to, to get back to where I feel good. And it, it, it's almost like doing that one time reminds you that it's just really, truly not worth it. That those those short little bouts, fine. Have a have a, a great weekend, or you know, I will tell you, a doctor, all the time. I tell my clients that when I do go on a trip and they have like the beautiful breakfast buffets where they have all of those breads and those pastries, I will uh, every morning have my very healthy meal. And the last day, I allow myself to go ahead and all the things that I eyeballed to enjoy that that last day. And it's funny; it's never as good as you think it's gonna be, but to not tell myself I can't have it, but to give myself that limitation to have it on the very last day. And that seems to have worked really well for me. <laughs> you just totally nailed something. Just like that woman who said to me, do I have to change my diet? I was like, that's so disempowering. So it's, I, I always say to people, you can have anything you want. You might choose not to because of how you look or feel. Right. So you're not a victim, right? You're, you're not victimized by, I can't eat that. You can eat that. I can eat whatever I want, but I want my brain to work, mm -hmm. but I want to be proud of my body and I want to feel good. I don't want to be inflamed. So I'm choosing not to eat it distinct from a can't. I have the power here, right? Like we have the power. We're not victims of our circumstance. We just choose not to fall into line, right? I, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to feel that. My, I still get peer pressure because I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Drinking 17 years ago because I didn't like how I felt. People are still like, why don't you do it? Mm -hmm. Why can't you drink alcohol? I'm like, I could drink alcohol, but I don't like the taste. I don't like how I feel. And I don't like the effects. And it's a toxin. Now that I'm in this work, I'm like, see, I was justified. It's a toxin. But it's really important to, to make sure your language, which is another area of empowerment, like how do you phrase things so that you're in the driver's seat? Mm -hmm. You are the one determining it and you're not a victim. Because obviously, if Big Brother says to you, you can't have that, then you're like, well, I want it. Yeah. It's like being a teenager again. But it's more like, I don't feel good when I eat that. Mm -hmm. That's outside of, of how I'm committed to eating. I choose something different. It's really about giving women back their power because you're not a victim. I flatly refuse to believe it. Like we're all, we all have the power to choose. Yeah. Yes. I love that. And I'm reading a book right now and she's, she talks about emotional eating and like, and she asked the very simple question of when was the last time you were actually truly hungry that you ate? Not that you're in anticipation of being hungry, but you were truly hungry. Your body's like, I need food now. She's like, ask yourself, when was the last time that you were in that state? And I'm like, wow, even somebody that's pretty, pretty conscious about that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's a certain time of the day I should be eating instead of my body telling me, Hey, you're hungry, which actually segues me into, uh, would love to hear, especially with gosh, your history, uh, the importance of understanding 
the gut. And here, the past several years, finally, the the sweet, sweet gut is getting its its time in the spotlight. How important it is to have a healthy gut and any tips maybe that you would have for the following on how to, you know, turn, turn that good around. Uh, if it's not, cause you said something, uh, that resonated with me is you're like, your gut should be like your elbow. You shouldn't know it's there. You shouldn't, you didn't think about it. And I was like, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. I to- I agree with myself <laughs> and you like, thanks for pointing that out. Like, yeah. So that my premise is that every area of your body should be invisible, mm. meaning it doesn't get your attention. You don't have headaches. You don't have hair loss. You don't have acne. Nothing hurts. Love that. You get up in the morning and you poop. When you eat, you poop. You're not bloated. You don't have stinky gas. Your periods are normal. Like everything works like a well oiled machine. There's nothing creaking and nothing squeaking. And so, so really when you look at health, all health starts in the gut. For example, your, your gut's responsible for absorbing your minerals and your nutrients. So mm-hmm. you can't function without that. But even more than that, about 70 to 90% of our serotonin, which is responsible for our mood, mm-hmm. is produced in the gut. So if the gut's out of whack or if the bacteria are dysfunctional or if there's not the right balance of dysbiosis, you don't produce the bacteria that produce your serotonin. Or maybe the serotonin gets eaten up by other bacteria or it's they're just bullied and they're not making it. So then your mood's off and you're like, oh, I need an SSRI. Well, you might temporarily, but what we really need is to get your gut functional. And yeah. so much of food stems to gut health. And so it all kind of wraps up. So what's really interesting is when you have toxins it's corrosive to the gut and then the function gets worse mm-hmm. but it's often invisible melissa like i had no idea i had all these toxins for years and i was like i haven't eaten gluten in 17 years at least not on purpose sometimes i'll eat something that's cross-contaminated and i'll be like oh really sick Aww. i don't eat gluten i eliminated sugar as part of this journey because i had an overgrowth of candida in my gut and that's a uh, mm-hmm a strain of mold that lives in the gut and loves to eat sugar and maybe crave food, and maybe puppy. So I was like, okay, we're done with that. Um, and I didn't eat processed food. And yet every day I had diarrhea or irritability or bloating. And, mm-hmm. and so I started, I got that mycotoxins result back as soon as I came home from France, because someone had given me a kit. So I did the kit right before I left and I then went off on my trip. So I started treating the mycotoxins and it was shocking, Melissa, because uh, initially, the worst gluten exposure I ever had took me three months to get better from, which is awful. And I had brain fog and exhaustion and emotional lability, like I was emotionally messy. I had dysfunction, like, you know, diarrhea all day, like I could barely work. And I noticed that after I started the mold treatment, which is binders, we're not talking anything fancy. It was charcoal, clay, chlorella, and uh, Wellcall, which is a, an old style medicine. I went from having that worst exposure for three months down to my gluten exposures now, which are infrequent, they last 12 hours. Okay. So it's still not pleasant. I still get very evil and I get a headache and I get diarrhea, but by the next day I'm okay, which is such a different life from six weeks of dysfunction. And, and so it's very interesting because gut dysfunction makes you more likely to keep your toxins because you can get rid of like 1% of your mercury every day into the gut, but you reuptake 99% of that 1%. So you're really only getting rid of 0.1%. And so if the gut's not functional, you won't get rid of your toxins. And if you get toxins, which you do because you live on this earth, then the toxins are worse. But I think there's something really important we should talk about because it pertains to all these wokas who are listening, right? We're all women of a certain age. So all most toxins are fat soluble. And that means, you know, and we're water, we're water, right? Like we, we have some fat, but we're water. So in order to get rid of toxins, you have to take them from their fat soluble state and in the liver process them in two steps in order to get to their water soluble state. Now, what's really kind of scary and creepy is that 
hormones are fat soluble. So your estrogen, your testosterone, your progesterone, these are fat soluble. And the liver is responsible for converting them into their water soluble forms where you then put it in the gut and poop it out. Now, if you're taking hormones that are not bioidentical, that produces a higher burden on your body to process. If you are processing your hormones and you're not easy, you're not even on hormones yet, but you're processing them, but your gut's dysfunctional. When that hormone goes to your gut to be pooped out, if your gut is out of balance, you will separate the hormone from its binder and it becomes fat soluble again. It can't stay in your gut. You're not going to poop it out. You recycle it. Uh -huh. When your body has higher levels of free radical estrogen, which is a free radical, it is pro-cancer promoting, it is pro-fibroid promoting, it is an estrogen dominant state, and that increases our risk for estrogen dependent cancers, so uterine and breast in particular, and then fibroids, and emotional lability, and disruptions in our body, and weight gain, because guess what, if you can't deal with the toxin that you're trying to deal with, if it's too much, you store it and your fat soluble toxins get stored in your fat mm. and you can't get rid of your fat until you get rid of the toxins right and so all these women who are like my god i eat three pieces of lettuce a day and i exercise for two hours i sleep 10 hours a night and i can't lose a pound i'm like yep congratulations you've got toxins i know it right like because if yeah. you're not lo if you do everything right and i wouldn't say that three pieces of lettuce in a day is right but if you're eating properly and you're moving your body and you're getting enough rest and you're not a super stress ball and you're not at the weight that you expect, it's yeah. because you have toxins. Yeah. One thing we all need to be taking care of is our gut. Now it impacts literally everything, your weight, your mood, your skin, your digestion. And because your gut houses up to 80% of your immune system, a healthy gut is truly the gateway to feeling your best. Unfortunately, our bodies are being attacked every single day and wreaking havoc on our gut health, stress, toxins, and even just one day of eating a Western style diet. Now, thankfully with Just Thrive Probiotic, it's now easier than ever to give your gut what it needs to thrive. Just Thrive's Breakthrough award-winning probiotic is the only product on the market that's proven to turn your gut into an antioxidant factory. Do you hear that? Yes, this probiotic actually produces antioxidants right in the gut, meaning you get maximum immune, digestive, and total body health support. Wow. It's vegan-friendly, gluten-free, dairy-free, histamine-free, and non-GMO. And the best part, you can open the capsule and sprinkle it onto any food or drink. It's the perfect recipe companion to keep your whole family healthy. Now, Just Thrive has been loudly endorsed by some of the biggest health luminaries on the planet, including me. And you can learn more by listening to the podcast that I did with Tina Anderson just a little while ago. This company is changing the game in the supplement industry. No fake marketing, no claims, just real scientifically proven results. You know, that's important to me. So if you're looking for the best in gut health and immune support, choose the clinically proven award-winning power of Just Thrive Probiotic. And guess what? You can save 15% off site-wide when you go to justthrivehealth.com and use the promo code Melissa made at checkout. Let me ask you really quick as, as the women's expert, uh, you had mentioned if they're not bioidentical, bioidentical hormones. And I know that's kind of, I, I am assuming I I'm not there yet. Knock on wood. Uh, but I'm assuming that's bioidentical hormones are what's out there now. <laughs> Exactly. How, how does one know if, if she is getting hormone replacement therapy or is looking into it? Is it just as simple as asking the doctor, what kind of hormones are you using? Or how do you know that you're getting ones that are better for you than not? This is such a great question, Melissa. So, uh, if you're using a patch, it's called the estradiol patch. It has a lot of different names, but yes. if it's estradiol, that is bioidentical. That's okay. estrogen. 
if it is a birth control pill type of substance, and I don't recommend that women in these years take oral estrogen because the liver takes a cut of it, it makes it even harder to process. And because it's bioidentical, or not bioidentical in that form, usually not, it's even harder to deal with. So uh, if it's oral, it's usually not generally. If it's a patch, it's bioidentical. If it's a compounded cream, it's most likely bioidentical because you're paying out of pocket for it, but it would be called biased. Okay. So estriol and estradiol are bioidentical. If it's progesterone, it's bioidentical. If it's progestin, it is not bioidentical. So the first is like, know your words. And what I would say is whenever you're talking to your doctor about it, ask them if it's bioidentical. If they have any type of pejorative response, like, who cares about that? Or why would you ask? Or you don't need it to be. That would be a good cue not to take the script, right? Like, you, you know, maybe maybe find someone who's going to... I had a patient say to a doctor, I think I need hormones uh, because I'm going through menopause. And he's like, what? Why would you do that? So, you know, you want to be with someone who's expert in your issues. And, and so don't be gaslighted. Don't accept no for an answer. Don't don't let them minimize you and sort of poo-poo you and say, oh, there's no... There's t- you know, there's a lot of good data to support that you want to use what your body knows as a mm-hmm. Premarin is derived from pregnant mare's urine. Never ever have I said, give me pregnant mare's urine, right? Like <laughs> never ever have I ever said that. So, so you want to use what's natural to your body. The horse can digest their own hormones, but you do not process horse hormones as elegantly as you process your own. Yeah. Now, um, I have a lot of women who, um, go the pellet route. Would you, how do you feel about the pellets? So I'm, I'm commitment phobic. When I got married, I said to my husband, I will commit to 50 years. I cannot commit to for life. Okay. I just, I'm commitment phobic. So I could get, I could get behind marriage and we have four kids and we've been married for 20 years and things are good. And, uh, with pellets, you know, if you get the dosing wrong, yeah, you're stuck with it for three months. So I don't personally prescribe or use pellets because I I am commitment phobic. I don't like that delivery system. I like to be able to pivot. And I don't want to be stuck. You know, you get a bad dose of testosterone and you're stuck with it for three months. It doesn't yeah. Fit. So yeah. there are a lot of doctors who do do pellets. I just don't. It's not my style. Yeah. Not, I mean, being so am- so amateur at that uh I, I do agree with you. That's, that's usually my, is I, how do they know? I mean, you've got your, you've got it now for three months. How do they know it's, it's exactly what you need. Um, this is why you spool me doctor. Um, because I'm going to say something that's probably gonna make you roll your eyes. <laughs> no, but call me Wendy. We're just Wendy. Okay. Wendy. Um, I, so there's so many things for us women, especially vocal women. I love that, that we, there's just so many things to, so many things for us to focus on. It's crazy. And I always say that we can't do it all, obviously. Uh, And so for me, my, my main focus for the last, you know, 25 plus years in this, this health and wellness industry has always been, I can control my nutrition and nutrition is the one thing I'm really going to focus on that I eat really good food, good quality food, a good variety of food. Yeah. 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 And I exercise, um, because you do hear, and I have had guests on the show that talk about the toxins in the air, the toxins, you know, on our food, the toxins in, in our water, in our shampoos and our cosmetics. And I'm like, ah, and I can't, I can't do all that. So I'm just going to focus on my food. Probably not enough, but you can do something about it. Melissa, think about it. Eventually your, you run out of a beauty product it runs dry, it's empty, and you need to replace it. That's the time you do something about it. Now, if you're a WOCA and you're listening and you have three personal assistants and unlimited funds, this is a good project for your personal assistants, right? But if that's not you, and I, I only have a few patients for whom that is then, and I'm not that person, I, you know, I have a lot of help, but I don't have that kind of help. Sure. As I run out of something, I level up. And I was at the hairdresser last night and she said, your hair is like heavy and coated with some weird sort of waxy, heavy coating. And I was like, what's up with that? 
And so she washed my hair with her product, which is not environmental working group certified, but it works, right? Yeah. And it got the, it was like soap scum, I had like soap scum stuck in my hair. And I was like, my hair feels really heavy and weighted down. So what I would say is sometimes even the clean products aren't the best for you. Like it weighted down my hair, but what you want to do is, and so actually the purpose of that telling you that is we spent like a half hour looking online for another product <laughs> that didn't have any bad stuff, didn't have coconut oil and didn't have oats or wheat because I'm allergic to wheat and oats are often transported in the same bags and the same trucks and they're cross contaminated. So I, I just stay away from oats. So we, we struggled and I was like, oh, I'm doing research at the hairdresser, right? Like I can write this off because we, we sat like for 30 to 30 to 45 minutes looking for a product. Yeah. So obviously you don't normally have, I don't normally have the bandwidth to do that, right? I'm not like hanging around like, oh, let's research products. No, I go to environmental working group and I look and see what can I get that's a step up from what I'm getting. Okay. It's my favorite thing because you run out of things. So you can't do it all at once. That's just not real, Melissa, but yeah. you could do it. You could do it, you, just, you know, as you need it, as yeah. you run out of your home cleaner, yeah. as you run out of your dishwashing detergent, your, your uh, washing machine, your dryer sheets, like as you run out of things, that's the time to level up. Not like, oh God, I have to transform my life. No, you just need to transform that one product. And mm. once you've got it, you're good. You can set it and forget it. You don't have to think about it. But uh, you absolutely do have bandwidth. And what you should do, you know, people say to me, uh, how do I know if what I'm using is toxic? I'm like, well, unless it has that big fat EWG certified logo on it, you can assume it's toxic. So just level up when you when you have a need for a new one. Assume it's toxic and level up. And if you find that it's not, pat yourself on the back, but assume it is. Yeah. Okay. Doable. Absolutely doable. And I, yeah, I do. Um, I have a question to stem off that, but I don't want to go there yet. I, but I do want to ask you, is there kind of a hierarchy of toxins? Is there something a newbie like me or some of my listeners that are like, okay, you know, I, I do take care of myself. I want to take better care of myself. Or I, I can't lose the weight. I, I just, I can't get my energy back. I'm going to go this route and see if this helps. Uh, where do we start? Yeah, this is such a great question. Okay, get the book, right? Because the book is meant to be a roadmap to walk you through how do you, we have hot top ticks, top, hot top tips at the end of every chapter. Tongue twist. Give you the top things to do, the top three to five things to focus okay. on. But first you want to focus on your foundation. So that's your food, your sleep, your stress, your movement, your relationship with others. Mm -hmm. uh, your, are you in the right life? You know, like this is the time where the wokas are like, Am I in the right life? What's my what, like my legacy going to be? Am I in the right marriage? Am I in the right job? Those are appropriate questions to ask because you're starting to look at the road ahead and understanding like, oh, it's getting shorter. I got to live it to the best of my ability. So you do the foundational work first. Most of us need more sleep than we get. So seven hours in bed is not seven hours of sleep. It's probably six to six and 20 if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. So we often need more sleep than we're getting. So address it, because when you have deep sleep, the cells in your body shrink, the highway between them gets larger, you drain your toxins. Good thing. Okay, so now you've done all that stuff. What can you do? There's two camps. One camp is, excuse me, one camp is the stuff you can do on your own. So you can level up your food, minimize or eliminate your alcohol, level up your beauty products, to the best of your financial ability, filter your air, Mm -hmm. and filter your water to the Do best that. of your financial ability. Whatever you can do is better than nothing. You can eliminate toxic relationships, right? Like those are toxic for you. So those are all things you can do on your own. You could take a binder, but if you haven't tested, you don't know what you're treating. So I wouldn't do that. I would mm -hmm. say when you get to the point where you say, I've gone as far as I can go. I've done everything that I know to do that's the point at which it's appropriate to get a functional medicine provider and work with the functional medicine provider. I'm sorry, a senior toxins trained functional medicine provider. There you go. And, and work with someone who's going to test your toxins and treat you so that you can get it out of your body. 
Mm. And by the way, I was 139 when I really gained all that weight. I was I was 130 for years. And then I was 139 when it came back from France. And I wasn't that Melissa, but I was heavy for me. Yeah. And and I wasn't also wasn't 139 muscle. I was 139 flabby. And so I went through this whole process and I'm now 126. Mm. And so I almost like went better than I had, right? Like yeah. more muscular. So so yeah. when you get to that point where you can't do anything more on your own, that's the point where you want to find a seasoned, you know, senior functional medicine provider who does toxins work and work with them. Yeah. My wheels are turning just because side note, I, about a year ago, it's, oh, oh, it's been over a year since we've, about a year ago, gosh, time flies, sorry, that um, my husband and I uh, bought a home in Mexico that's out in the middle of nowhere on the beach with, um, it's very simple. It's, it's very clean. The food is very clean. And I, and I just say that because for the last little over a year, I've always attested it to my addition of walking, you know, increasing my walking every single day, because I just like you being almost 50 had always been in the 150s weighing 150s and thinking to myself, I, you know, I've, I've always had a lower body fat. So I'm like, I just have a lot of muscle. Great. But I still felt heavy. I just felt like a heavy five, six, five, seven gallon in the 150s but I couldn't get it off. Um, but I have lost about 12 pounds over the last year. And I, and I I test to me, walking was the only change that I made, but I wonder if it is that I'm spending half of my time now, half of my life living in this remote area that doesn't have the air pollution that doesn't have, I mean, our house has two water filters on it that the, we only shop at a farmer's market. Uh, I wonder if that's, Right? Like yeah, the quality of life and the yeah. and the taking a break. You know, people mm-hmm. say to me, "I lost weight on vacation." I'm like, "That's because you weren't stressed." Right. Stress makes you gain weight. Right. So it's like it's it's like the whole blended soup of yes, right? Yes, it's the yeah. remote nature and the decrease in pollution and the increase in walking and the quality of food and the stress and like it's all of it. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Oh, wow. That just, that just made me think a little deeper on that. I, uh, social media is a wonderful place, but we do have, especially, uh, Wendy, I don't know if you notice, especially right now we have, uh, the nutrition, the people that, oh, there's such a battle, um, on people's views and what they believe is good for you. And, uh, what isn't, I'm curious your take, because I think yours is probably an extremely valid one on the idea of a quote unquote detox. I mean, we have everything from detox patches to detox teas, to detox, you know, to cleanses, to diets, to, uh, and, and then some people will say, you don't need any of that. That's what your liver's for. You, you have a liver to detox you and you don't have to do anything above that. So can I get your take on detoxes? Definitely. Uh, your liver is designed to deal with your fat soluble toxins, no question. However, your liver was not designed to deal with the breadth and range and depth and frequency and amount of toxins that it's getting every minute, hour, day, week, quarter, year. It's just not designed to deal with the deluge. I call it a waterfall. Mm. So I'm a huge fan of detoxification. But that's not what most people think of when they think of doing a detox. They think, okay, I'll do a three to five day thing. It's nice and quick, in and out. I would call that a reset. So any of those quick fixes are getting you back on a track that would start to make you feel better. But it's not going to give you the sustained ability to get those toxins out of your body. It's simply going to point you in the right direction. And I think all of us can use resets. They're very valuable. I, I do a juice fast every once in a while, but I'm clear it's a reset, right? Mm. It's, it's, not a, it's not a true detox. It's just okay. like repointing me. You know, I did a five day fast years ago and it was amazing because it disconnected. It, you remember you were talking about eating when you were hungry. Mm. I used to feel like if I was hungry, I needed to eat right that minute. And what was so cool with the detox, I'm sorry, the the five day thing, the five day fast was that I learned that I got hungry and it passed Mm -hmm. and I never got hungrier than very hungry. Mm -hmm. 
I always thought that when you were very hungry, it would just keep escalating. Yeah. And, it, and it didn't. And yeah. that was really freeing because I had some ability to go, oh, I'm hungry and I'll be okay. It's not going to get any worse. Like this is as bad as it's going to be. Uh, so going back to those, I'm a huge fan of resets. I'm a huge fan of anything that will help you disconnect your attachment to food and the way it should be and the way that you must do and those disempowering thoughts. I'm a huge fan of those things. But let's not call them detoxes because they're not genuinely detoxes. Detoxification is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a long-term game, not a weekend warrior thing because... It's, we just have too many toxins for that to really be the thing. Yeah. Too much. Yeah, absolutely. It's very valuable. So I have a, I have a, I have, I have a husband. We've been together. We've been married 20, almost 29 years, but we, like I told you, we're sweet, high school sweethearts, 33, 34 years together. Um, he's my soulmate. I love, I love the bugger, but we, he's, He's very sensitive in his nose. I don't know how else to say that, but he can, he has, he just has a very heightened sense of smell. So all over this house are Glade and Febreze plugins. No, no, <laughs> I, no. And so my question to you, and this is uh, maybe more just from your experience, more than your education, when you have a partner that doesn't really isn't in alignment with you with the the need to because they're like you know what do you want to do live in a bubble kind of kind of a mentality uh even I even took me a long time to get him to want to eat grass-fed meat and to you know to and I would love for your this is totally different but I forget it your opinion on organic um but what do you do with a partner that doesn't see the need or they don't maybe don't even have the health issues you have, you know, they're, they're doing men seem to do okay, you know? And so they don't, why are you doing this? This is, you know, pointless. How would, how would you suggest we navigate that? You know, when, when we built our house, we were young and dumb, right? We tore a house down. It was lead. We built our house. And at one point my husband picked out the ugliest chandelier for the dining room. He's like, I love the chandelier. And I said to him, awesome. I don't care for that chandelier. Now, if you're going to walk by it every day and notice it and love it and be happy we bought it, I can get off it and I'll, I'll figure something out. But if you love it and then you're never going to notice it again, then might I suggest we go with something that I am going to notice and love every day. And so please tell me authentically. And he said to me, I'm never going to notice it again. Like, that's not my style. I was like, awesome. Decision made, right? Like, that's a very elegant way to understand. Like, you love it here, but you don't really care. Yeah. I look at it every day and be upset. So we kind of came to this agreement that if it's something that will bother me long term, we won't do it, If he, especially if he's not going to notice it. Yeah. So, so what I usually say to my husband or what I would recommend saying to your partner is, so you don't have to get rid of the air, the sense. What you, what I would recommend you do is level up the quality of what you're putting in. So it's not, you can't have your air fresheners. It's that we need to have them be healthy. Yeah. So that because those air fresheners are fat-based solvents and they have to be processed by the liver. That's what makes them sticky is their fat, they, they land, you know, they stick, mm, stick yeah. around. And so your liver has to process them. So, so you don't say to him, you can't have it. What you say to him is, if you want it, it has to be a, something that's not harmful to us. So I would recommend a, an essential oil-based air freshener, right? Uh, I, so I would, so you always want to navigate it. You know, you're not, you don't want to be the bad guy. You're actually the good guy. You're like, I don't want you breathing that because long term, that's harmful for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you mentioned offline your husband had surgery. There, it's very rare that you meet a human who's in perfect health. Men right. don't tend to show it as much, but they do get that belly and they lose their hair and they lose their hearing and they aren't <clears> sharp. And so they, and they get tired or maybe they can't get an erection. So they definitely feel it. They just don't think that it's toxic. God, that's related. 
but so so what you want to say is like you're showing the signs of it you just don't you just think it's because you're old but i will challenge you to say you don't get sick because you get old yeah you get sick because the exposure to toxins as you get older keeps accumulating and then you spill over and you have symptoms so you get sick when you have too many toxins for your body to deal with yeah so i would say Hey, you know, like if your budget allows for it, we need to level up because I love you. We've been together for over 30 years and I want you to be able to run after our 18,000 grandchildren and great grandchildren. <laughs> uh, that the chandelier was a great analogy. That's actually something that would absolutely work for him. I appreciate that. So can you share with me really quick your thoughts on organic or the importance of organic versus, uh, you know, the conventional produce that we have out there? Yeah, I mean, think about, Think, think about this just as another way in which we're getting deluged, especially because we eat three to five times a day mm -hmm. and we drink. So there's a lot of ways that we can be exposed to toxins. And so, for example, if you eat anything that has high fructose corn syrup in it, the high fructose corn syrup has the glyphosate that was sprayed on the corn. And then it has mercury because they use mercury to go from corn to high fructose corn syrup. So you're getting like a double whammy. Wow. And then, what's high fructose corn syrup in? processed food. Processed food converts to sugar. What does sugar do? Feeds the inappropriate bacteria and the candida in your gut, throwing off your gut. Starts the rat wheel. So in terms of organic, because we eat every day and because it then is what we're relying on, I highly recommend that you eat food that uh, does not have pesticides, herbicides, insecticides. The, excuse me, the most commonly used herbicide in the world is called glyphosate. And it's implicated in a number of cancers and lymphomas, but it also makes the good bacteria in our gut, it kills them. Mm. But the bad bacteria in our guts are not impacted. They don't have this pathway called shikimate, which is what glyphosate interrupts. And the good bacteria can't make their essential amino acids when that pathway is interrupted. The bad bacteria are like, bring it on, we're not impacted. It also impacts the soil, which kills the bugs that impacts the birds so they have no food to eat. It's directly toxic to bees. If we don't have bees, we don't have food. So it has all of these downstream effects. And it's also been implicated, I don't know if you've heard these um, studies where male frogs turn into female frogs. Well, that's because of all of the pesticides they're exposed to, it's real. So I would say, given that yes, your liver is designed to do this, but yes, your liver is inundated, don't give it more work. Do what you can to eat local and organic so that the food is at its peak freshness, its ripeness. When it hasn't been sprayed, it has more antioxidants in it because it has to protect itself. And how it does it is increase the antioxidant level. So the, the pound for pound nutritional value of organic locally grown food is actually higher than something that was sprayed, picked before it was ripe, schlepped for a thousand miles and ripened on the truck. Not mm. You know, that's just, it's, we don't really think about where our food comes from, but you and I grew up in the same age. Like there were never tomatoes in the winter. <laughs> and had they didn't have that. Yeah. In the 70s, they didn't have that. Yep. Nope. Absolutely not. And that's probably a good opportunity to talk about genetic modification because uh, oh, I talked to Michael Antonio, who is the head researcher on glyphosate. Like he's, mm -hmm. if you look up studies on glyphosate on PubMed and uh, all the, all the official sites, his name is in the list of, of the publishing scientists. Yeah. And he, I'll quote him. He said to me, genetic modification is a very crude approach. And when you do it, it has unintended consequences and creates other, pallid, uh, other infectious organisms and disruption in the system that mm -hmm. are unintended. But when you're eating something that's genetically modified, why was it genetically modified? Was it modified so that it would have higher nutritional value? No, it was modified so that it would grow faster, be resistant to that herbicide, be able to be picked earlier. It was mo genetically modified for the benefit of the company making it. It was yeah. not genetically modified for your benefit. It does not benefit you, it benefits the company. And there are unintended consequences. And by the way, that GMO food was sprayed with an herbicide, pesticide, or an insecticide. So now you get the genetic modification with the pesticides. And yeah. one really easy, quick way in the store to know, like, hey, am I eating something that's good for me or not good for me or concerning? 
is to look at that little sticker. Now, as a woka, I'm like, I've got to see that sticker. I need my, my cheaters, right? But if it starts with a nine, it's organic. Organic means it cannot have been sprayed with major pesticides or herbicides, insecticides. If it's four, it's conventional. It's probably sprayed. If it's yeah. eight, it's genetically modified. So look at the number it starts with. There's, it's either a four or five digit code. And if it starts with a nine, you're good. Eight, not so good. Four, not so good. Try that with the left if you can. Yeah, that's a great cheat sheet. I love that. So we have um, we've so many topics that we've covered. I, and I, in the beginning, I wanted to ask you really fast again, um, because of the personal experience and because of your education coming together, can you share a, a little bit more on gluten in and of itself? Uh, again, I think that's a topic where it had its moment in the sun where everybody was trying to be, be gluten-free. And then I do hear a lot on um, social media channels, you know, that gluten's not that bad. Uh, where, where And you being a celiac is, is personally is different, but you know, obviously the effects of when your body does not agree with gluten, how serious it can be. But for somebody, is there a, yeah, so, so, how they feel or is everybody, should everybody avoid gluten? No, uh, but a lot of people should. So it's 40% of the population has one or both of the genes that makes you sensitive to gluten. Mm -hmm. a. B, it's been modified often. It hasn't been genetically modified, but it's been hybridized. So what that means is it's been red to grow faster, grow shorter, be resistant to drought and not fall over. Mm. And when they did that, they amplified the gluten content in it, which made it more allergenic. So, and, and when you think about when you eat it, what do you eat for breakfast? Cereal or a bagel? What do you eat for lunch? A wrap or a sandwich? What do you eat for dinner? Chicken and pasta and broccoli. So you're getting it three times a day. And anytime you eat gluten, you open the lining of the gut. It's called the tight junctions and your your outside world and your inside world meet, which is not what you want. So whenever you're eating gluten, that happens. If you have the gene, I'm sorry, if you don't have the gene, it opens for 15 minutes. If you have that gene, one or both of them, it opens for four hours. Wow. So when you layer on, if you're eating it three times a day, your, your tight junctions are open the entire day. You're being exposed to bacteria, candida, and other, and other issues. So yeah. so yeah, that's I would say if you eat it and you have any symptoms, you might want to try, try without it and see how you do. Okay. I love that. So I wanted to thank you so much uh, for being on. I feel like as a good student, I, I have so many wonderful quotes in my head from you. Uh, uh, we'll definitely read your book and pass it along. And I encourage everybody else as well. And to share with both of us, uh, your aha moments from that book, because I'm imagining there's going to be quite a few uh, can you share with the audience where they can find you uh, across the World Wide Web? Definitely. So we have a bricks and mortar for people who are interested in working with senior functional medicine providers. That's at fivejourneys.com. And then for, you know, the other 99% of people listening who are like, oh, I want to be involved, but I'm not going to Boston. Yeah. An online brand called Dirty Girl. And um, it's found at drwendy.com forward slash gift. I actually, that's the brand is drwendy.com. And on that gift part, there's chapter one of the book, a quiz to see how toxic you are, the non-toxic guide to healthy living, and then all the recipes and all of that. So there's the two ways to get involved. And then I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Wendy Trubo MD. And I, I mean, love interacting with people. Okay. Well, and you guys remember it's W-E-N-D-I-E. -E. Yes. Ed, thank you so much for your time. I, uh, I am walking away a better a better practitioner and also a better woman. I feel talking to you and, uh, this has been, uh, this has been a big deal for me and I'm sure my listeners. So thank you so much. And for everybody that listens as always, I hope, especially after this episode that you wake up feeling prepared and that you go to bed feeling proud. Have a great day. Wow. We've reached the end, but before I leave you, I'd love to hear from you. After all, it's not every day that someone reaches out and asks for your opinion. And to me, your opinion does matter. So please share this episode with anyone that you think needs to hear this message. And remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Melissa McAllister. And until next time, thank you for being your own health advocate.